everyone and welcome to part two of my cooking video for today. Today I'm making quiche. Um, in part one I showed you how to make short crust pastry um, which we ended up by making it into a ball and popping it in the fridge. So the next part is to actually make the quiche. So we're going to start by rolling out the pastry. What you need to make your quiche is a quiche dish, one like this. This is 23 uh, centimetres diameter, I wouldn't go any bigger than that. Um, I'm hoping that we've got enough pastry to cover it, so we'll give it a go. I'm just going to grab it out of the fridge and then we're going to have a go at rolling it out. So here's my pastry, wrapped in cling film, pop it here. So when you're rolling out anything, um, you probably want to put a bit of flour down just so it doesn't stick to the surface. So I'm just going to get some of my plain flour and just put it over, just a light coating over my countertop so that it doesn't stick. And I actually don't have a rolling pin, but that is not necessarily a problem because there are other things you can use. So I was having a think and I thought, I know what I can use, I can use a bottle. So over here, I have a bottle, a wine bottle. Um, what I'm gonna do though is cover in cling film because I want it to be hygienic. But because of the shape of it, it's round and it's quite heavy, it should do the job. When I went to get a rolling pin, I went to buy one, and they didn't have any, which I was very shocked by. Um, in the supermarket, they they should have had them, but they'd actually sold out. So, just gonna cover my bottle. As you can see, it's covered in cling film, which makes it hygienic, so I can use that now to roll up my pastry. So I'm gonna take my pastry ball out of my cling film, pop it on my counter. And I'm just gonna press it down a little bit. I'm gonna give it a little bit of help to start getting it a bit flatter. It's really nice, it just it feels like Play-Doh actually. And I'm just gonna sort of try and keep it sort of fairly neat, you know, I don't really want it to crack too much. Um, so let's see if this bottle works. So obviously if you have a rolling pin, use a rolling pin. Um, I'm, as I said, just gonna use this bottle, which actually is completely fine. That works brilliantly. But as I said, just make sure that it is covered with cling film or something just so it's clean. So I don't really don't want this to stick to the counter. So I'm moving it as I'm rolling it. I need to get it in a kind of circle, roughly as big as the tin. So it's gonna be fairly thin which is fine because that's what you want with a quiche. You want a sort of reasonably thin pastry area. Just gonna keep rolling it. And if it does start to stick, just put more, a little bit more flour down. Just a bit more flour because just cover the counter. It's really annoying if you roll something out and then it ends up sticking and you have to kind of peel it off and start again. So let's just move it around, keep rolling it, keep persevering. Just going around, taking it in turns to go around every edge because like I said, it needs to be a kind of round shape. You can sort of neaten up the edges a bit if they start coming apart. rolling it. So actually this is the first time I've ever made a quiche and I've ever done this with these trays so we're in it together. It might might not work very easily I have no idea. It's quite a big bit of pastry to kind of drape over something 
but all we can do is try and as we say assist you know it's about giving it a go isn't it so I'm just going to use this to sort of help loosen it off off of my wooden top because I can feel that it's starting to stick a little bit so you can always use like a spatula just to lift it slightly so that it doesn't tear okay wow this looks a bit like a pizza so got my pastry now it's rolled out I'm just going to see if it's big enough okay great so as you can see what I've done is I've taken it and I've draped it over my dish the next part is just very carefully just press it down lightly because you don't want to make any holes in it so just lightly press it down like that just so it's sitting nicely in your dish and then you can just sort of fold over the top okay and then what you're going to do is trim the edge okay so obviously you can see with mine it's sort of dangling over the side like that don't really want that so I'm going to get a knife probably a sharp one if I've got one here we go again be very careful using a sharp knife I'm just going to go around and just trim the edge very carefully keeping my fingers away from the edge as much as possible and if you find that you've got any holes in your pastry when you've draped it over your dish or your tray you can just like neaten this up now around the edge and just just sort of squeezing it in a little bit just make sure it's not there's no bits hanging over okay and like I said you know you might find you've got some thin bits or some bits where it's you've got a bit of a hole but look you've got this spare pastry which you can use just to patch it up if you feel that you need to make it a little bit thicker in a certain place mine looks a bit thin here I can see through to the dish I don't really want that so I just patched it up a little bit and there's the little bit in here that I'm just doing so it's you know it's a bit like a, <laughs> a bit like arts and crafts you're just sticking bits on if you need to because ultimately it's just gonna whatever you do is gonna taste the same and it doesn't really matter if it looks a bit rustic as they say so here we are right so we've done that bit as you can see I've got my pastry now in my dish. So what I'm gonna do is just pop that into my fridge and then we'll do the next part. Right, so I've cleared down my surface. I've got my pastry in the tin in the fridge. I've got to chill that for 20 minutes. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna start getting the um, ingredients to go into my quiche. I am gonna make a Mediterranean um, roast tomato, Parmesan and basil quiche because I love Mediterranean flavors lovely thing about quiche is you can put whatever you want in it more or less you just have the egg and then you can put in you know ham or bacon or mushrooms or peppers or whatever you want um so you can play around with it you know it just experiment and see think about what you like and maybe pop it in um so the first thing i need to do is set my oven to 200 degrees so i'm going to do that now and then i need to prepare my um tomatoes Okay, so um, the first thing we need to prepare is our um, tomatoes. So you need to have 300 grams of cherry tomatoes. Just weighed mine out. I've also taken them off the stems and taken the green bits off the top. I've also washed them um, in some water and I'm gonna pop them into a metal or an oven proof dish. So I'm just gonna pop those in first because what we're gonna do is we're gonna roast those so they'll be super soft and yummy. Um, you need some olive oil, so we're going to drizzle some of that on. Here we are. So I'm just going to drizzle it over so that they're all covered. And then you need to add some salt and pepper. Okay. 
Okay, so just using my pepper mill and my salt mill, just add a nice lot of pepper, salt, sorry, and my pepper is here. Put some pepper on as well. There we go. And then if you want to, I'm quite a handy person when I cook, so I'm just gonna just give them a bit of a zhuzh around with my hands just to make sure they're coated completely with the oil. And then I'm just gonna wait for the oven to heat up. And whilst I do that, I'm gonna start the next part, which I will talk you through now. Okay guys, so, oh, a little bit of a surprise. When I was looking through the recipe, it says that when you make quiche, you need to do something called blind baking. You don't actually have to do it, but if you do, it helps to make keep your pastry nice and crisp um, and cook around the edges um, so it's not too soggy. So um, I had a look to see, uh, you do need sort of certain things to blind bake, but you can wing it a little bit, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, so I'm gonna get my pastry back out the fridge and what we need to do is make a circle to go in the bottom of the pastry dish you usually use greaseproof paper. I don't have that, but I have foil, so we can use that instead. Um, you also use something called baking beans. I don't have those, but you can use things like lentils or rice or things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wing it and do it like that and hope that it works. So let's uh, cross our fingers and I'll just get my pastry out the fridge. Okay, so here we go. So this, is, uh, this has been chilling in the fridge now for uh, a while, maybe like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So when you blind bake, what you need to do is take a fork, take your uncooked pastry, and you're just gonna prick holes all across the bottom of your pastry, like this. Like that, okay? Hopefully you can see that. And then the next stage is to cover the whole bottom circle of your pastry with either foil or ideally grocery paper but I don't have that so what I'm going to do is just fit it in so, I can, so that it's kind of covering my pastry like this and then I've got lentils you can use dried basically dried goods so lentils rice dried pulses or beans if you haven't got the ceramic ones that you know, people who cook all the time have. So pour in your beans or your lentils or whatever it is that you are putting in when you're blind baking and then you just pop that in the oven. So we're going to put that in at the same time as we put in the um, tomatoes which is convenient because they take about the same amount of time. So I'm just gonna wait for the oven to heat up and as soon as it's heated up, we'll pop it in. Fingers crossed it works. I've never done this before, so hopefully it will come out looking nice. Um, and we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so my oven's heated up now. Um, so I'm gonna pop in my tomatoes and my pastry case. Obviously I'm gonna use something to protect my hands. Oven gloves are best. I don't have any, so I'm gonna use um, a thick tea towel. And both of these need to go on a kind of low shelf in your oven. So let's pop in our tomatoes first. And then I'm gonna pop in my pie crust. I hope that this works. Put that in. And then I'm just gonna cross my fingers, hope you've crossed yours with me, and we'll wait 20 minutes and see what happens, okay? Okay, so while it's baking, I'm gonna start making the um, the kind of filling, that's the word, um, that's gonna go in my quiche. So I need two eggs, so I've got some nice golden yolked eggs that I'm gonna crack into a bowl. One, two. Go. and I'm just going to move that out of the way and then you're just going to use a fork or a whisk actually I'm going to use a whisk and you're just going to beat your eggs together okay the next ingredient that we need to add so as you can see I've just beaten them so they're nicely mixed is our cream so I've got my cream here now this is 384 no sorry 300 millilitres and we need 
believe 184, no 284 millilitres. So I'm going to measure it out using my trusty measuring jug, which I've used before. It's got the measurements on the inside. I think, again, if it's slightly more or slightly less, it's not really going to matter. So I'm going to have to sort of judge this a little bit because it doesn't have increments other than every 100. So I've done sort of about 280 there. So I'm just going to gradually add my cream bit by bit to the egg. Just make sure that it's mixed together properly before I add my next bit. So just doing it a little bit at a time. a bunch like that. Give it a good wash just to make sure we take out any leaves that have gone a bit brown or have got a bit crushed. Wash that off, give it a shake and then I'm going to cut off the stalks so I've just got the leaves and then I'm just going to break them off and drop them in very carefully into my bowl of creamed eggs. Let's just pop that in. I do absolutely love basil. It just smells amazing. It's so nice and it goes so well with cheese and tomato. It's just divine. Let's just take this out and use maybe a fork or a spoon just to stir it in put some more in so i guess you just put in as much as you want really if you like basil and you really like the flavor of it then you can just put in loads i do really like basil so i'm going to put in a lot if you're not so keen just put a little bit in or don't put any in at all it's really up to you so i've got my um, basil leaves in here i put mine in whole you can always cut them or shred them if you want them in smaller pieces what I'm going to do because I know that I'm going to have to pour this back into my pastry case is I'm going to transfer it back from the bowl into my jug just because it's a lot easier pouring from a jug than it is from a bowl so let's just get those leaves in there so that's ready to go into my pastry case right so it's been 20 minutes so I'm going to take out my pastry and my uh, roasted tomatoes. Let's see what they look like. Fingers crossed it looks all right. Um, so very carefully uh, using a cloth or some other gloves. I'm gonna open the oven door. Okay, there's fat in here, so it's spitting. So I have to be very careful. I'm gonna put that onto my skillet. I'm just gonna leave that. Let's get out the pastry. Bring that over and pop that on my mats. Okay, so I've had another look and what it's telling me to do now with this blind baking is we have to empty out our lentils and our parchment paper or our um, tin foil, which is what I've got, and then put it back in for another 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna pop it back in, but I'm only gonna put it in for about five minutes just to let it brown off a little bit. Same temperature. I'll check after five minutes and see how it looks. Okay. Okay, so I've got my um, pie crossed out. I checked it after five minutes. It still wasn't particularly browning off, so I left it a few more minutes. So as you can see, I don't know, around here, it's kind of gone a lovely golden brown. So that's what you want it to look like before you put your filling in. Okay, so now the fun part, we're gonna put the filling in. Um, so I've got 50 grams of Parmesan uh, cheese here. So I'm gonna start off by just sprinkling that over the bottom of my pastry. There we go, okay. And then I'm gonna take my roasted tomatoes and put them on top, they're just behind me. And they're still 
in their hot dish. So I'm going to use a cloth. Bring that over. They do look really yummy actually. And I'm going to use a spoon just to get them out and just pop them around my dish. mixture of my basil leaves and my cream and my egg so that should go in and fill up my pastry dish and then I'm just going to spread it all around a little bit because the leaves have all kind of clumped together so I'm just going to move those around so they're in amongst all the tomatoes got a nice even spread you need to take a few out if you think you have too many in there I might take a couple out of here because they're kind of overrunning there we go the whole thing so I can get an even spread there we are okay so we've got our mixture in so the next thing we do is just put it back in the oven and bake it until it looks golden brown just forgot almost forgot I need to put the last bits of cheese over the top so just sprinkle parmesan over the top bits that you've got left there we go and then you just pop it back into the oven same temperature 200 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes and just wait check on it and just see if it's gold or brown and then get it out so we'll have a look at it again okay guys so my alarm's just gone off and my quiche has been in for about 25 minutes um so this is a moment of truth so let's just see how it looks okay brilliant okay well they say the proof is in the eating so i've cut myself a slice of my quiche the pastry is really um crispy which is good because that was the whole idea so let's give it a go No soggy bottoms, which is good. Mm, that's really nice. You can really taste the um, basil and tomato. Really yummy. So give it a go. Or make up your own ingredients to put in. You just need the egg and the cream, then you add whatever else you like. I hope you've enjoyed my video, and I hope that you are all keeping well and safe. And I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.